Hi and welcome back to another Mr. Talk Maths video and this week's problem is to do with this triangle that you can see here and it's about working out what value theta is. Now there's a few special properties about this triangle, obviously we've got a, an interior line here uh, going, well basically bisecting the bottom right angle there at B and we've also got from C to D that's an equal length to A to B indicated by the lines through the sides. So we've then got to work out what the bottom left angle, the angle at C theta is, and what the angle at A two theta subsequently would be. Because once we've got theta, we can work out two theta and vice versa. But yeah, the, what we want to do with this is work out the value of theta. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, the first thing I've already done is labeled the triangle here, A, B, C, and D just to make it easier for you to put your solutions down in the comments below. Uh, but the first thing that I want to do now is label some of these sides and the angles. And I'm gonna call the green angle, the one that's bisected, I'm gonna call that X. And then after that, I'm gonna start labeling some of my sides. So let's label the equal length side A. Okay, so I'm gonna call both of those A. And that's just gonna make it easier algebraically for me to try and work out my solution. Uh, let's label this side B, that's the shared side inside, splitting the larger triangle up into two smaller triangles, and then I'm going to label this other side from D to A, C, and I'm going to do that just so that I've got a full length of the triangle, but also if and when I do decide to split these triangles up, I have got a length there from D to A. Okay, now the next thing I wanted to look at was the angles. And the angles I know will add up to 180, so I've got 3 theta plus 2x for the whole large triangle will must give me 180 degrees. Right, now the interior angles of the smaller triangles, the ones that the, uh, the line uh, BD splits these, split the large triangle up into, I'm going to call this one first of all alpha and that is CDB or BDC, I'm going to call that angle alpha and then therefore basically what I have is that the other angle next to this must be alpha minus theta and the reason for that is is because these two uh, smaller triangles have exactly the same angles apart from one has an extra theta um, and one has one less theta so the angle uh, sorry the triangle with two theta in it well, the third angle must be the same as the other triangle, but less one theta, because we've added an additional theta to the angle uh, at the top, so DAB, so let's take that away from the third angle, so that third angle must be alpha minus theta. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. We've got one additional theta, so the third angle must be the same angle, but minus a theta. Right, now those angles must be equal to 180 degrees because they're on a straight line. So we've got alpha plus alpha minus theta is 180. And if we simplify that, we get 2 alpha minus theta is 180. And if we substitute that into the original equation, we get 2 alpha minus theta. We've changed the 180 to 2 alpha minus theta. And that's equal to 3 theta plus 2x. Adding theta to both sides, we get that 2 alpha is equal to 4 theta plus 2x. And we can half everything there to give us alpha is equal to 2 theta plus x. Now the reason why that's particularly useful is we can put it on the diagram and now we've got everything in terms of 2 theta plus x, which is going to make things, again, easier. Because as we've got one equation already with theta and x in it, if we can find another equation with theta and x in it, uh, and another numerical value we can then solve via simultaneous equations. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, as I've got two variables, two equations with theta and x only in. Now my next uh, trick is essentially splitting these triangles into two smaller triangles and I've done that there and if you want to just go backwards and forwards to check what I've done feel free but those are the two triangles split up and labeled appropriately. Now what I want to do here is I've got some angles and I've got some sides and so my next thought was, well, 
they're not right angled, I can't use right angle trigonometry, but I can use other trigonometry. Now cosine could be a little bit complicated, so I decided to try the sine rule. And if I try the sine rule for the left hand side triangle here, uh, I want one with A and B in it because then I can uh, use the same for the right hand side triangle and put those two equations together to then get hopefully another equation with theta and x in, but let's see. So this left hand side triangle, I'm going to get a over sine x, okay, so that is the side over sine of the opposite angle, must be equal to another side over the sine of that opposite angle. So we get a over sine x is equal to b over sine theta. Now hopefully you can read all of this okay, because I've tried to make it large enough so that you can, whether you're on a phone, um, but obviously it's going to be more helpful if you're watching this on a TV, uh, or iPad or otherwise, some bigger screen. Um, just because there's a lot of algebra, lot, lots of algebra involved in this one. So I'm going to rearrange that now for a over b. So that gives me a over b is equal to sine x over sine theta. And again, that's just to isolate on one side of the equation, the x and the theta. Now I'm going to start doing this with the right hand side triangle on your screen now. So sine rule for the right hand side triangle would give me b over sine 2 theta Okay, is equal to a over sine theta plus x, okay? And that's where it was important that I had these angles. That theta plus x angle already worked out. Now, this is a little bit more complicated here because I've got some like combined angles. I've got two theta, which is a double angle, and I've got theta plus x, which is combining two different angles. So what I need to use here is double angle formula. So this is something which you will have in your formula booklet and you will get shown at A level, if you haven't already done it, where this comes from, hopefully. So we've got sine th 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. So let's use that to expand the denominator here. So we get B over 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to, now I need another formula, which is called the double angle form. well, not double angle formula, but it is kind of. You basically derive this double angle formula from it, uh, but it's the angle formula for sine x plus y, or a plus b, or theta plus theta, or theta plus x. You can substitute whatever you want here for x and y. So in my case, x in this formula is theta, and y in this formula, to make it just a little bit more confusing, is x. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to change it to theta. Wherever I see a y, I'm going to change that to x. And so I get this. a over sine theta cos x plus cos theta sine x. Right, now again, what I want to do here is rearrange this for a over b. And so I'm going to do some kind of, not cross multiplying, but I'm going to multiply by the right hand side denominator. And I'm going to divide by the left hand side numerator. I'm going to do some nice algebra uh, and get this. Okay, so I get this thing, which is now, I've now got two equations in terms of, or equal to rather, a over b, and I can now equate those two things to each other. And at the moment, they look very complicated, but don't worry, because quite often with sines and coses and trig functions, things can look quite, quite complicated, but they will simplify, uh, hopefully quite nicely, which they do in this case. So equating both equations, I get this, and just to you know, add a little bit more complexity, I've swapped the sides of both of these things, but it doesn't matter. And again, you can go back and you can check that I haven't done anything to, um, you know, to change any of these two equations. So yeah, we've got this. Now, what I'm going to do there is I've got sine theta on the denominator, denominator, that's the one, of both sides of this equation. So I'm going to cancel that out, essentially multiplying both sides by sine theta. And then I'm going to multiply after that the right hand and the left hand side, I suppose, by 2 cos theta. And that will cancel out denominator on the left hand side. And we get left with this. So we get sine theta cos x plus cos theta sine x equals 2 sine x cos theta. Now, what you might notice is that we've got sine x cos theta on both the left and the right hand sides. Just the left hand side, it's swapped around. I've got cos theta sine x, but that's the same thing. Don't be confused. Now, I'm going to get everything onto one side here, and I'm going to take away from both sides 2 sine x cos theta, and that will leave me with this. Sine theta cos x minus cos theta sine x is equal to 0. 
Now I've left it in this format particularly uh, because I've got another formula, surprise, surprise, it looks kind of similar to an early one anyway, but I've got another formula, which is this. Sine x minus y is equal to sine x cos y minus cos x sine y. And it looks very familiar again in the fact that x is theta in my case and y is x. So I'm now going to use that formula and make everything a little bit neater and put it all together and I get sine theta minus x is equal to zero. Now what we need to think about here is the sine graph. So the sine graph, and we need it to go from minus 180 to 180. Um, and you'll see why that is in a second. But it's basically to do with the limits of theta and x. What could they be? Now they're in our triangle. So theta and x have to both be less than 180 and greater than 0. They can't be equal to 0 and they can't be equal to 180 because otherwise it's not going to make a triangle. And there will be more restrictions on these, but I've put very loose restrictions on them at the moment. You know, you've got more restrictions because we've got other angles in the triangle, and so they will have to be smaller than, uh, you know, even 180. But the problem is we don't know what these other triangles are, and so we don't know exactly what the angles are. So I'm going to put very loose restrictions on them at the moment. Um, and that's not a problem because we get theta minus x, therefore has to be bigger than negative 180 and has to be less than 180 because the smallest uh, or the limit of theta is zero and the upper limit of x is 180 but it can't actually be those values so if you take them away from each other zero take 180 is minus 180 but it has to be bigger than that and by the same logic it's going to have to be less than 180. I've spoken a lot there hopefully that makes sense and so what that leaves us with then is that for sine theta minus x to be equal to zero Minus 180 can't be a solution because theta minus x can't be minus 180 and by the same token it can't be positive 180 and so the only solution we have got for theta minus x is zero. Okay, now that leads us on very nicely to the fact that theta must be equal to x. Right, we've now basically got another, or we have, not basically, we've got another equation for theta and x. So tidying that everything, uh, tidying everything up and going back to the original uh, question, we have now got these two equations, which makes everything very nice because I can substitute now theta for x. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to change it to a theta, and I'm going to get this. 180 is equal to 3 theta plus 2 theta. And if we simplify that, we get that 180 is equal to 5 theta, and you can see where this is going divide by 5 and you get theta is equal to 36. Let's put a box around it. Now I think that's a very neat solution, or a very neat answer I should say. Solution, in my solution anyway, was quite complicated. Could you do it in a simpler way? Possibly. I've seen some other ways online with uh, some geometry which is a little bit nicer. Could you do it in a different way? Could you find one of those other ways? I hope you enjoyed that and I wanted to show you just before the end all of my working out um, and kind of how this how I got to this answer because you know I didn't get to it in the step by step solution I'm showing you and I want to show you some behind the scenes so this is all kind of my working out um, and how I got to it and it took me a while and I was doing some other um, some other things on the right hand side there that you can see that actually didn't work out but that's the, the brilliant thing about solving these problems is that you'll try things that don't work out and then you will keep trying until you get to the solution. I hope you enjoyed that problem and I hope that you were also able to get the solution if you tried it yourself. And if you, like I say, if you found a different solution, please put it down in the comments below. I really appreciate reading them. And make sure if you enjoyed it to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos. I release a new problem solving video every single week. Okay, thank you for watching and I will see you next week for another video. Till then, bye-bye.